Hello, everyone. I'm super, super excited because we're chatting today, but we're chatting about chatbots. That's right. I'm here today with Jasmine, and we are chatting all about chatbots, one of my favorite topics. <laughs> How are you doing today, Jasmine? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I wore my clippy earrings, especially for you today, because we're chatting about chatbots. When I think of chatbots, early day chatbots, some things like Smarter Child, Clippy come to mind. For some people out there who maybe don't even know maybe that they've interacted with a chatbot, could you share some examples of chatbots for us? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, uh, Clippy, a uh, very super awesome character from uh, Microsoft Word, um, the older versions of Microsoft Word, that would kind of give you cues and hints to help you and tell you what you can do next with your document. So for example, if you might be working on something like an essay or just some documentation, and you might've forgotten at some point to uh, save, Clippy will pop up and, and, and ask you if you'd like to save. And that's one of the really magical things about bots. It kind of helps us think about and think ahead of ourselves and helps us communicate in a way that will get us the answer that we're looking for. So even if it's the answer that we didn't even know that we, we wanted, honestly. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of bots nowadays are helpful bots, right? Like bots that hint on what the next step may be or what we're supposed to do. I know I use a lot of bots with um, medical software when I'm trying to figure out what I need to see my, my doctor for. Um, mm -hmm. Are you... As far as the bots that, that you've built and that at your building here at Microsoft, what are some good, easy bots that people can get started with? Oh, well, um, my favorite one is the EchoBot. Um, and that is used with um, the Azure sample, um, the bot under the bot framework. And the bot framework is a set of different um, uh, languages and also um, software development development kits, SDKs, that allow you to create your bot um, from code. But then there's also another one called, uh, another way to create your bots without code called the Bot Framework Composer. So it's really up to you if, whether or not you want to go and code or um, use either Python, C Sharp, or JavaScript to create these bots. Um, and what's so great about the EchoBot, it's a really great way for, for you to enter into bot making. So um, the EchoBot um, and it does exactly what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm, I'm saying, but it just really echoes back your input. And that's really important because the next step is taking that input and understanding um, what, what the user want. Was the user just saying hello or are they asking for help? And you, you mentioned before NLP, natural language processing. Can you explain a little bit the importance of NLP with the chatbot? Because I imagine having our, our chatbot sound as close to a human as we can is important. Yes, absolutely. So um, the idea of langu uh, natural language processing focuses on the study and the science of uh, mimicking or imitating natural language. So, you know, when you and I say, hello, how are you doing? You know, I, I expect you to say, I'm good, I'm doing good, I'm doing fine. But in the same case that you talked about, you know, talking to a doctor, if you, if they ask you, how, how are you doing? You might say something along the lines of, I'm not feeling well, I'm not feeling good, I came here for, for those issues. And that, and that context even changes in between different languages, you know, so, um, uh, what uh, data scientists and machine learning scientists do, they're they're looking for those cues and those keywords in the in, in the language to mimic that, so that a bot can actually you can actually have a natural natural conversation with a bot. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier that there's some ways that people can actually create a bot using zero code. I know I myself have played around with. Q&A bot, which seems like magic Harry Potter spells to me, <laughs> because it's truly just uploading a PDF and using that NLP to create a bot. It, it's really cool to see what we can do just with the power of natural language processing. Um, so Absolutely. what kind of languages does that framework support? Like if I am a developer and I am looking to, to just build a bot and really make it to my specifications, what's available to me? So, uh, 
Currently, you can use the bot framework SDK in C Sharp, dot, um, which is .NET, and JavaScript and Python. Um, and one of the great things about the bot framework is that you don't have to deploy it to the cloud to test it out. So there is a tool called the Bot Framework Emulator where you can build your bot locally on your machine, and then you just connect to it through the bot through the bot uh, emulator, and you can test out uh, your bot before you deploy it anywhere. And the other piece of that is bringing in that natural language processing. Now you can do this, as you mentioned before, the Bot Framework Composer. Um, you can do it without code as well, but with um, with natural language processing, there's another service called LUIS that stands for Lewis, um, Language Understanding. And that's the NLP part of the bot framework. So you essentially create a, a little, get a little endpoint and you can connect that to your bot. And, and in uh, Lewis, you pretty much go to a service um, on the web and you train your, your model and then you, uh, you publish it and then you put it into your bot. So they're two separate, the two separate systems, but you can put them all together in the emulator and in the cloud or wherever you'd like your your bot to live. So many useful tools. I love Lewis, which everyone always says, "Who's Lewis?" I'm like very helpful person in my life. <laughs> yes, and yes, I agree. also having that kind of emulator sandbox mode to be able to try things out before you publish it out to the world has been so wonderful for me for testing. I Love Lewis. Love being able to to test things out within Azure. Super super fun. Do you have any favorite bot projects? Like maybe some really cool use cases or examples of using the Microsoft Chatbot framework out in the wild? Oh man. Okay. So one of my favorites is one um, that we use internally. Um, that's called Who, and it's just a way for you to look through the employee directory for somebody. For example, maybe I'm looking for somebody who is working with chatbots. Um, I'm probably gonna use this, this, um, this service or this this tool or this bot to look to look up this person. Um, externally, um, I can't think of any that come to mind, but one of my favorite um, ones that I see that folks um, like to build are ones that integrate with their, their chat their chat clients. So whether that's Teams, whether that's um, Slack, um, I actually, one of my favorite features about Teams and Slack is the like ability to create things like reminders and that easy way to connect. It's just an easy way to connect into your workflow. Um, so, um, and on that, on that note, um, with the bot framework, you have many different things called connectors for you to connect your bot with. So that's to Skype, even like a web app, even um, like I mentioned, Teams. There's many ways for you to connect to your bot, and you can just and and um, in Azure, it makes it super easy. You just kind of upload your bot um, with the with the Azure bot service, and um, just set your connector and take it from there. Well, you're giving me some ideas. My DMs get pretty crazy now. I'm thinking, do I need to build a Chloe chat bot to handle all of my inbound? I'm gonna have to hit you up later for some. API knowledge here, Jasmine. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, that's what's so great about like um, cognitive service services in general, just the ability to, you know, be able to use the, these tools without having to, you know, be a data scientist or having, you know, have to have that direct knowledge, that deep knowledge of NLP. Yeah, absolutely. And if people want to get started, are there some resources that they can check out or maybe some cool modules or getting started tutorials that you would recommend? Absolutely. I wrote one exactly. <laughs> In fact, so um, I have a repo where I um, actually built on top of the EchoBot. Um, and that was actually my first foray into bot building. And um, I called it the HTTP bot because the way that I had it set up is that you you um, send uh, your message and that message gets sent through an HTTP request anywhere you'd like. Um, and so the demos that I like to use uh, integrates with um, the Logic Apps, the Logic App Serverless service in um, Azure. Um, and the, the demo that I like to use the most with it is like sending a text message, but there's other, I give you other ideas in that repo as well. Um, and I wrote that in Node initially, but then I also made a version in C Sharp. 
So definitely check out that repo. And there's also more docs um, in that repo for you to check out more. So if you're interested in the Bot Framework Composer, um, that's another option for you and as well as Lewis. Oh my goodness, so exciting. I know for myself, before I worked in tech, I worked in customer support and I had to answer a lot of the same questions. I think chatbots are such a great way to handle those commonly asked questions and also to help you know mitigate FAQ questions to your site. There's so many cool ways to use chatbots. So I'm excited yes. to see people who see this talk and get inspired and build some really cool chatbots out there. Yes, yes. I'm so excited to see what everyone builds with, with what they learned today. Well, thank you for chatting about chatbots with me today. The perfect title for this chat today. And I will see you on the internet soon, Jasmine, but make sure that it's me and that you're not talking to a chatbot because I'm going to get really, really good at using this. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>